Well, what's up guys and welcome to this video on question 4 of the 2019 final exam. Um, okay, so this is uh, slides and rockets, but essentially it is on Newton's laws. Okay. Okay, so question 4.1. A child of mass 48 kilograms uh, is on a water slide. The child slides down a steep slope and then travels up a gentle slope inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.12. Okay, so mu k is equal to 0 0.12. Um, and we know that the mass equals 48 kilograms. So basically this kid starts off somewhere here, slides, and goes that way. Okay, so um, the child passes point A with a speed of 15 meters per second, so the velocity at A equals 15 meters per second. The child reaches, or just reaches, point B. So that means that the velocity at B is equal to zero because he just reaches. Okay, so draw a labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the child while sliding from A to B. Okay, so we want a free body diagram in this region right here. Okay, so what are the forces acting? So let's do it right here. 4.1.1, we want a free body diagram, okay? So we definitely have a component of weight acting downwards, okay? The child is in contact with the slope, right? So that means that there's going to be a normal force Okay, and then we also know that there's a frictional force. Okay, and like I described before, the motion is like this, right? So that means the frictional force is always in the opposite direction to the motion. So if the motion is up the slope, the friction is acting down the slope. Okay, so we have force, friction. Okay, and we get three marks for that. So question 4.1.2, calculate Okay, so it says the component of the child's weight down the slope. So the component of the child's weight acting down the slope is 52,52 newtons. Calculate the angle theta. So question 4.1.2, calculate the value of theta. Okay, so we know that the component of the child's weight acting down the slope. Okay, so if we break this down, this component of weight, we have weight acting perpendicular to the slope and we have weight acting down the slope okay and this is our angle theta so what we can say is that our weight component is equal to mg okay so f so we're like talking about f parallel right is equal to mg and we want this component right here so it's sine theta and we know that's equal to 50 2,52 newtons. So we know that the mass was 48 kilograms, gravity is 9,8, sine theta is equal to 52,52. So there's only one unknown here, which is um, theta. We can solve for theta. Theta equals 6,41 units of degrees. Okay, and we get three marks for that. Okay, question 4.1.3 says calculate the uh, calculate the force friction acting on the child okay so we know that our force normal okay is equal to mg and now we're looking at this component the, perp uh, the perpendicular component so mg cos theta is equal to our force normal and we also know that the force friction equals our mu k times our force normal so therefore our force friction is equal to mu k mg cos of theta. Okay, we know what mu was, it's 0 0.12. We have a mass of 48 kilograms, gravity is 9,8, and cos of what you calculated, 6,41 degrees. And if we plug that into our calculator, we get a value of force friction is equal to 56,10 newtons. 
and we get ourselves four marks for that. Okay, then 4.1.4 is um, says state Newton's second law of motion. Okay, so this is a definition. Okay, I'm not going to write it down because it's quite a long one, but I will uh, say it out loud. So basically, Newton's second law says that when a net force acts on an object, the object accelerates in the direction of the net force. The acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Okay, so from Newton's second law, we get the idea that F net is equal to um, mass times acceleration. Okay, uh, and then obviously question 4.1.5 tells us to calculate the acceleration of the child. Okay. Um, Okay, so if we look at our free body diagram, we know that the direction of the motion is in this plane right here, right? It's in this plane that's that's um, kind of in line with the slope, okay? So what we're going to say is that my sum of the forces in that direction going upwards is equal to my mass times my acceleration in that upwards kind of direction, okay? And we know that we only have two forces acting, which is our Fg parallel plus, um, okay, so actually I've taken upwards as possible, positive, and both my forces are acting downwards here. So this Fg parallel is acting downwards, and force friction is also acting downwards. So in both of mine are going to be negatives, so minus, um, so it's Mg parallel, or Fg parallel minus force friction is equal to my mass times my acceleration. Okay, we already know what the value of Fg parallel was. It is 52.52, which was given. So minus 52,52 minus my force friction, 56,1 is equal to 48 times my acceleration. So my acceleration comes out as equaling minus 2,26 meters per second squared, okay? The negative sign is simply, an, is simply an indication of direction, so my acceleration is equal to the opposite sign of what I gave it as a positive direction. So it's going to be 2.26 meters per second squared down the slope, okay? And that is my acceleration. Yeah, because they want the magnitude and direction, and you'd get four marks for that. Okay, so then uh, the next thing says, on reaching point B, the child immediately slides back down the slope towards A. So once the child reaches point B, they start to move back downwards. So explain if the magnitude of the acceleration of the child from A to B is the same. So from A to B, so was the acceleration that way uh, the same as greater than or less than the magnitude of the child's acceleration from B to A? Okay, so from B to A, and this is A to B. Okay, so is the magnitude of, let's say, situation uh, that's 1 and that's 2? So which one's bigger? Okay, so remember that basically our... Um, acceleration is dependent on two things, okay? It's the sign of this left-hand side of the equation. So when we were going up, the they were both negative, okay? But when we're going downwards, we need to remember um, that now my Fg parallel is pushing me downwards, okay? So my Fg parallel, so on the way down from B to A, our uh, Fg parallel is down, so it's going to be still negative, but now my force friction is acting upwards, because friction always acts in the opposite direction you're going, right? So now my force friction for the new situation, if we drew, drew a free body diagram, it would look something like this. Okay, and my force friction is now upwards, so uh, plus force friction, okay, is equal to m mass times acceleration. Okay, so obviously now we can say that the magnitude 
um, is now less from so the magnitude of the acceleration is less from uh, b b to a b to a than from a to b okay and we can say as as friction is acting up the slope opposite to the component of weight so the resultant force is less okay so basically um, as friction the force friction uh, acts up the slope the slope which is opposite uh, to the component of weight okay so we can say that the net force if net is less therefore the acceleration is less Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you guys. So before we had both of these forces acting in the same direction. So the magnitude of its acceleration was bigger than when these guys are now acting in opposite directions. Okay, so moving on to 4.2, a rocket in deep space is moving sideways um, with its rockets off from A to B, as shown in the diagram. Okay, deep space, why are they telling us? Uh, they're telling us this that deep space is telling us we're in a vacuum, okay, and there is no friction or anything like that. Okay, on reaching point B, so when we reach point B, the rocket fires for two seconds while the rocket travels to point C. At point C, the engine turns off, okay. On the diagram, uh, on the sheet to draw in point C. Okay, so basically um, we have our rocket. Okay, this is at A, this is at B, and we have to draw in point C uh, and the path of the rocket from B to C. Okay, so at point B, the rocket fires on, right? So at point B, we have a force acting upwards. We've got no forces acting in this direction opposing the direction that it's going now, right? So that means all that's going to happen is our point C is going to be somewhere up here, okay? Because all we've done is added an upward force. So we're going to still have the same motion pulling it that way, but we're going to have an upward force because of the rocket pushing on it, okay? So that's why our point C, our point C is going to be uh, to the right, still moving to the right, but now acting upwards. Okay, and then it says um, on the answer sheet, draw in the path after C. So at point C, um, at point C, the rockets are then turned off. Okay, so now what our path is going to look like is pretty much a straight line from C onwards because now there's no net forces again. Okay, so it's just going to look how it was. So if we have point C here we have a rocket okay so from c onwards it's just going to be a straight line okay you see my magnetization there and that is a straight line okay so that's how that um would look and we get two marks or four marks there so basically what we need to understand is that at point b we turn on the rocket which only results in an upward force so the rocket continues to go in that direction because there's no opposing force so it continues to move uh, to the right, but now starts going upwards as well. And then we turn it off eventually. And then there's no forces acting on the system. So it just continues to go as it was. Okay. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, this was an interesting question, about 23 marks. So not too bad. Um, yeah. So in the next uh, video, we will do question five. Thanks for watching, guys.